Live from Las Vegas, it's theCUBE. Covering Dell Technologies World 2019. Brought to you by Dell Technologies and its ecosystem partners. Hello everyone, welcome back to theCUBE's live coverage here in Las Vegas for Dell Technologies World. I'm John Rowe, Dave Vellante. Dave, we got Pat Gelsinger back on theCUBE. He stopped by yesterday, did a flyby after his <laughs> keynote, kicked off our <laughs> intro session, yeah. he's back for the sit down. <laughs> welcome back. I can't get enough of you, Pat. Hey, 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 hey. Pat yeah, Gelsinger. Yeah, I, I love to photo bomb you guys, so it was Anytime. great. Anytime. <laughs> I know you're super busy, business is going great. And you know what a what a three years it's been. I remember the keynote you gave at VMworld a few years ago. This was really a, a time where I, I would call it the seminal moment for you because you saw our vision, and we've talked privately and on the cube about. And you gave this, this speech of this is going to be the preferred future, and it was very visionary oriented. But it ended up happening. That became uh, the beginning of a run mm -hmm. for VMware. Yeah. And since then, you've been kind of chipping away and filling in all the the tech pieces the business model and deals with Amazon and now Azure and others. Um, how are you feeling about it? What's the highlights? What's your perspective of where, where we are now? What's the notable accomplishments? Well, you know, it's been just great. And you think about the run that we've been on where, you know, we five years ago, we described the hybrid future. And, you know, most people said, what are you, stupid? Right, and uh, you know, it's uh, you know, student body right to the public cloud. And now everybody has started to understand the difficulty of replatforming, right? It says, wow, this is really hard, right? I can spend millions and millions of dollars. In fact, one customer's estimate was that we're going to spend almost a billion dollars replatforming all their applications to the cloud. And when they got them cloud native, what do they have? The same apps. So imagine going to your board and saying, I'm going to spend a billion dollars just so I can be on the cloud, but I'll give you no new business value. You got to be kidding. Right, you know, and that's why this hybrid future, and as I like to joke, uh, Andy five years ago, Andy Jassy, you know, said if you're running your own data center, you're stupid, and Pat said if you're using Amazon, you're stupid. And now we're doing bro hugs on yeah. stage yeah. with each other, right? <laughs> and, and, and by the way, hybrid, you, you picked that trend, that was right. Multi-cloud, though, came out of more of a reality, less of, a, of an operating vision, because hybrid cloud, you know, you saw the dots, connected yep. those dots, but I think multi-cloud was much more of a, just a reality. When people started to realize that as I started doing stuff on-premises, Wow, I got a, and I got native workloads in the cloud, and there are benefits for being in the cloud for cloud first yeah. for yeah. certain workloads. But then the multi-cloud thing comes up. Yeah, and I think everybody has started to realize, and I really, as I would say, I think every CIO needs a three-cloud strategy, making their private data centers into a proper operating private cloud. Right, and some of this week's announcements, I'm sure we'll get back to those a little bit to me, are just huge and you know, Dimension and you know, VMware Cloud and Dell EMC, you know, a huge accelerant of making your private data center up like a private cloud right at scale. Second, you need a primary public cloud partner, right? And I think most people should pick a primary, right? Not one, a primary, and then a secondary cloud, right, you know, as their partners, and then you have your range of SaaS offerings. And I think that needs to be the core right, of uh, every IT, you know, CIO strategy for the future. And our objective is to create an environment between, right, you know, what we're doing with VMware Cloud Foundation and now VMware Cloud and Dimension, right, what we're doing with Amazon, our preferred partner for the public cloud offering, what we announced this week with Azure, right, our 4,000 other cloud partners, including, you know, a very successful relationship with IBM, right, and saying, okay, that's your infrastructure, and the bulk of your workloads should run on a VMware environment that we can operate across that with the same tools, the same interfaces, the same security, the same management tools, and then yeah. use the other cloud services as they bring you business value. You're a fan of TensorFlow? Go for it, baby, right? You know, and use it in your app. You're, you, you love function as a service with Lambda? Go for it. But the bulk of your workload should lay in here and use these where they have business value. And to follow up on the three legs of the cloud stool, the CIO's legs, number three is for what? Is it for risk mitigation, exit strategies, or more, more specific best of breed, horses for courses type of workloads? Yes, yes, and yes. Yeah, okay. right, to some degree, it really is saying nobody wants to say I'm only in one, mm -hmm. right? No, you know, nobody wants lock-in you know, for it. Also, you know, clearly, hey, you know, these are technologies, they break, you get more resilience that way. Right, you know, you want to be able to manage your cost environments. Uh, you know, there's clearly this view of, okay, you know, if I, you know, if I can do one, two, and three, I can do N. 
right? Because most people are also going to end up picking, oh, I'm in Hong Kong. Okay, I need a Hong Kong cloud because my data can only go there. You know, I'm in uh, uh, Malaysia. Oh, they require all data to be there. Because in practicality, if you're a big enterprise company, it's not just going to be three, you're going to need to be four, five, and six as well for regional. And then you're going to acquire somebody, they're using a different partner. It really says build an operational environment that works that way, give myself business flexibility, I have application flexibility at that way, and if I've done that, I really can move to the other environments that my business requires. I think one of the reasons why you guys have been so successful, if I go back five or six years, I remember you laying out the market, the market segmentation, you're obviously close to customers, you're a very clear thinker. You've obviously looked at the, the market for multi-cloud. Mm -hmm. How can you, how do you describe that? How do you look at the, the TAM, how, how big is it? Well, you know, if you think about uh, you know, cloud today, Right, you know, we're, we're closing in on 100 billion of the public cloud, you add SaaS to it, you know, you got a, almost another 100 billion at that level. And, you know, the overall data center market is probably in the order of, you know, a trillion-ish dollars. Right? Give or take. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, on that order. And then, you know, you throw the operations costs inside of it, you're probably looking at something that's, you know, in the order of two trillion dollars, mm -hmm. right, you know, as well. So this is a big market. Right, you know, part of the excitement that uh, you know, right, you know, people are seeing in this cloud environment is they can just go faster, right? And as I described in the keynote today, we want to enable every one of our customers to stop looking down and look up, right? Spend less time looking down at the infrastructure. We're going to operationalize it. We're going to automate it for you. We're going to take care of it so that every one of your engineers can become software engineers building app and business value. I want to ask you on that point because one of the things I was talking last night, the analyst said, uh, briefing or the uh, reception was uh, having a debate with one of the strategists in, in Dell and I'm like, look at outcomes are great at the top of the stack, looking up, you want outcomes, but during the OSI stack days, no one cared about outcomes, it was either token ring or ethernet, speed won, so certain things have to be speed driven, world class, and keep getting better, and so that's what we're seeing as an infrastructure requirement, horizontal scalability, operational scale, so that's a speeds and feeds game, so the outcome there is, uh -huh. faster <laughs> and simpler. Up the stack, data becomes a big part of that. That where we see outcome. Do you see it that way, Pat? Because, you know, again, your infrastructure, Satya Nutel said on stage, we want to have a whole new paved new infrastructure for this next generation, which is essentially a refresh of infrastructure. Okay, well what does that look like? It's got to be fast, got to be flexible, software defined. Your thoughts? So, you know, clearly, I mean, what we're trying to do is we build this common infrastructure layer, right? You know, is build an environment that allows you to be fast, but also allows you to be in control and cost effective. Because if you would say, oh, I just want to be fast, uh, that doesn't work, right? You know, we still have limited budgets and, you know, people at someday there's a CFO day of reckoning, right? You know, but, you know, you also have to realize and part of, you know, the hybrid cloud laws that I described this morning, you know, one of those is the laws of physics. Right, you know, hey, you know, my factory automation, you know, for robotics needs to be 40 milliseconds, period, right? And if I round trip to the cloud at 150 milliseconds, guess what? Right, <laughs> you know, right, you know, my image recognition for being able to detect my autonomous vehicle is less than 50 milliseconds. I can't round trip to the cloud, you know, you know, it has to be fast, right? But we also need to be able to push more of this data, more of the inference of my machine learning and AI closer to the edge. And that's why, you know, you heard Michael talk about and Jeff talk about this explosion of data. Most of that data will be at the edge. Why? Right, because every camera, you know, every sensor will be developing it, and I'm not going to round trip it to the, the cloud because of economics, yeah. right? You know, I can't afford to take all that data to the cloud, right? It's not just the latency. Physics matter, latency matters. Yeah, you know, and you know, so for that, so I can't take it to the cloud, I got to be able to compute locally, I got to be able to apply the inference uh, of my AI models locally, but, you know, I also then need the scale aspects yeah. of cloud as well, and my so third law, of course, was regulation. Right, where, you know, guess what? You know, I was just with a major customer in Latin America and uh, they said they are repatriating 100% of their data and applications out of the public cloud. Because the new, right, uh, president, right, is insisting on data only in his country for all of their nationalized resources and assets. Huh. So that's driving the change. So the, this, this brings up the multi-cloud kind of thing earlier. You got to be in all the, you guys got to play in all the, the ponds out there in, in, the, in the industry. But let's talk about on stage uh, here at Dell Technologies World. You were on stage with Michael Dell and Satya Nutella, and I'm, I was looking up there. I'm like, man, 
the, the generational knowledge of the three people <laughs> on stage, <laughs> the history. I you think know, it just ends up getting old. You, well, I mean, <laughs> you, you've seen it all. I mean, from Intel to EMC to VMware, and you know, Dave and I were, Dave's a historian of tech, as he, as he self claims it. I'm up there, I was pretty blown away. You guys are leading the industry. What kind of moment was that for you? Because now you've got Microsoft doing a deal with VMware, and you know, who would have thought that would happen? Yeah. Well, yeah. maybe yeah. two different aspects yeah. to it. So, you know, one is, um, you, know, I, you know, I've known Satya for over 25 years. You know, he was sort of going through the Microsoft ranks and you know, Windows, NT, SQL, et cetera, and I, yeah. you know, at the same time I was. So we got to know each other almost 25 years since our you know, first interactions. When Michael Dell first came to Intel to meet Andy Grove to get microprocessors so we could start his business, I was there. Right, so I mean, these relationships are decades old. Yeah. You know, so in that view, it's sort of like, hey, Sacha, you know, how's the wife? You know, <laughs> yeah. hey, Michael, how's Susan doing? You know, so it really is. But you, know, you, haven't, you haven't gone anywhere, you're still in the industry. Yeah, <laughs> but then, you know, to be able, the, the announcement was really pretty special in the sense that I, I call it 20 years in the making. You know, not a, a year or two, 20 years in the making. Because VMware and Microsoft has essentially been at odds with each other for two decades. Right, you know, at that level, and to be able to be on stage and saying, that's right, we're cooperating on cloud, we're cooperating on client, and we're cooperating on futures. Okay, that's a pretty big statement uh, as well. And I think customers respond very positively you know, to that, and you know, I'm, you know. It's been a bold move, and you also made a bold move with the cloud too, Pat. I got to say, that was another good call. Partnering with Andy Jassy, again, once, you know, both yep. idiots, I guess, calling each other, you know, <laughs> hey, you're public cloud, at odds, partner. Yeah, Boom. and you know, and I really think this idea of moving tail, you know, headwinds to tailwinds, and you know, the Amazon partnership with Andy, you know, and as we say, it's our preferred cloud partner, VMware Cloud on AWS, a VMware offered service, you know, super committed to it. You know, we're closing in on 2,000 customers on that now. Clarify the Amazon relationship. I saw some press articles that kind of miss skewed a little bit. They kind of made it sound like the Azure deal was yeah. similar to uh, the Amazon deal. Just explain the difference between the VMware deal with AWS and Andy Jassy, that relationship, and the other cloud ones. Take a minute to explain yeah, that. Yeah, thank you. And you know, what we're doing with Amazon is VMware is offering a cloud service that I operate for customers that runs on Amazon. Right, you know, and that is a VMware delivered service. They're our preferred partner, right? We're uh, not bashful about that, that if we have the choice, that's the one to go to, it's going to be best. But what we've done now with Azure is we've made the VMware Cloud Foundation the same underlying components available with Cloud Simple and VirtuStream, you know, they're partners, right, to have a VMware Cloud Foundation offering delivered by Microsoft as a first party service. So VMware Cloud, VMware is delivering it. You know, in the Azure for VMware services, that's being delivered and supported by Microsoft. And that's the same deal you did with IBM, It's very, you know, Google, the same, right, you and know, other we, ones. Yeah, the same as we've done with our 4,000 other cloud partners, right, and uh, obviously VirtuStream and Cloud Simple are part of that 4,000, and they're making the VMware Cloud Foundation available to Azure customers and, now. And what's the benefits to VMware customers for those deals? Well, imagine that you're somebody, and Walmart was quoted in the uh, press release as an example. Walmart's a big VMware customer. Walmart is also a big Azure customer, right? So their ability to say, oh, I can have a hybrid environment makes a lot of sense for that kind of customer. So we really do see it as saying, you know. Customer driven, basically. Absolutely, and you know, people said, well, which are you going to sell to? I said, well, in most cases, customers have already decided, mm. you know, who their major cloud partners are. We're saying the VMware offering, even as we're first and best with Amazon, right, you know, we're saying, you know, as they make their cloud choices, we'll have a valid VMware Cloud Foundation offering available. And best, I want to understand best. best is in part anyway because of the engineering you guys have done. When we interviewed Andy Jassy in uh, November at reInvent, he said, you can't have a lot of these types of partnerships. Oh no, no. And, I, and it's very deep integration. Is, is that why it's best and what makes it best? Yeah, I, I call it first and best for two reasons. One is because we are engineering, we are co-engineering. You know, the bits first get done on VMware Cloud and then we make them available to the other partners. You know, that's where we're doing the core engineering, the innovation. You know, Andy has hundreds of engineers working on this. I have hundreds of engineers working on it. So it's first and best from an engineering sense. And given it's my service and my offering, you know, we're selling it aggressively in the marketplace, positioning it as part of the broader set of solutions and leveraging that, like you saw this week with the Dell EMC uh, offering, VMware Cloud and Dell EMC. It's leveraging all that first and best work you know, to now bring it on premise as well. So it really is both the engineering as well as the go to market. I got to ask some CEO questions. 
So, um, Tom Sweet has said that they're happy to have the Class V transaction behind them. I'm sure you're glad too. Thank you. That was very generous <laughs> of you. Um, you've been I incredibly good at acquisitions. I mean, obviously Nicera, Heptio, uh, Cl Cloud Health, AirWatch, I mean, uh, Bello Cloud. Bello yeah, Cloud, yeah. I mean, most acquisitions, frankly, don't live up to their objectives. Yeah. I think yeah. that's not the case for VMware. So now your good, good news is you draw off a lot of cash, so you're building up that, that pot again. Mm -hmm. How do you see, going forward, the use of that cash, R&D, M&A, maybe you could make some comments there to the extent that you can. Yeah, and you know, the, we said the primary ways we use cash, stock buybacks and uh, M&A. And that continues, we did the special one-time dividend, which helped Dell go public, everybody's happy. The markets responded super positively on both the Dell side. You know, they're up, what, 40% since they go public. VMware, you know, up almost 50% this year. I mean, it's just, you know, just tremendous, right? Tremendous, uh, $80 billion value now. Yeah, I mean, just awesome. tremendous. And, right then we said, going forward, where it's business as usual for us. We're going to continue to do stock buybacks, we're going to continue to do M&As. You know, as you said, you know, we're good at this acquisition stuff. Really? You know, and you know, part of that is, as I call it, you know, you know, imagine you're a hot startup company, right? And you say, do I want to be part of VMware? Right, and we try to answer these questions. Do we have vision alignment? Right, yes. you know, right? Yep. right? <laughs> Second is, can we accelerate your vision? Because most startups, you know what I mean, they talk about you know, unicorns and so on like that, but what really motivates them is their vision. And if they believe their vision is going to be accelerated as part of VMware, you know, so they're on this and we're going to turn them to that, oh man, they get excited. Do we have a cultural fit? I meet with every CEO, right, of our you know, acquisitions, and you know, HR does, we really, you know, are they going to fit our team? Because you know, cultural issues, you can't butt your heads day and night. Yeah, no, certainly VMware, you guys are, uh, that culture is very hard, <laughs> hardcore. <laughs> they work yeah. hard, play hard. Yeah, yeah. You know? and you know, it has to be you know, this deep drive for technical innovation, yeah. right? You know, the technical due diligence that we do with our startups, you know, right? It's sort of like, you know, this is like a PhD exam for these, you know, I mean, they yeah, really got to know Some people don't fit stuff. in the culture. VMware yeah. and there. And we've and said no to a number, right, of potential acquisitions over cultural uh, issues uh, as well, that they're just not going to fit. And hey, we're not going to be perfect, but the fact that we can bring these companies in, accelerate their vision, give them a culture that they're excited about, you know, we have maybe 90-ish percent success rate, the industry average is below 50%. Yeah, it's a fantastic track record. Right? I mean, and that just gives us the ability yeah. to do organic and inorganic innovation, which to me is like a, you know, a potent recipe. And you got the radio conference coming up, all your top tech people and the cube will be there. Pat, you've created great shareholder value. You, got, you turned those headwinds into tailwinds and we were watching the whole time. It's been great to watch and what's next? You have your VMware tattoo still on from <laughs> VMworld? You have a Dell tattoo? You know, uh, I'll tell, you, know, tell, you, I'll tell you a little tattoo. inside, I'll tell you a little inside story. My wife, you know, uh, after the VMworld keynote with the tattoo on, we're, we were leaving on vacation two weeks later and all she said to me after the keynote was, what's that tattoo thing? It better be gone by the time we leave for vacation. <laughs> <laughs> it's like it was no, honey, that was a great keynote today. It's like, that better be gone. <laughs> <laughs> Nothing's better than watching that video and that cube sticker we had on your hand, too. <laughs> Pat, great to see you as always. Great commentary, great analysis. Congratulations on all the success with VMware. Again, the transformation just is getting started. We're seeing a lot yeah. more and good things for you guys as well. Yeah, and you know, this has been a great week in some ways. I mean, I, you know, I sort of joked this morning on stage that you know, it almost felt like VMworld, right? We talked about VMware yeah. technologies and that Dell partnership accelerating it so well. It's not and AMC world, it's Dell world now. It's a whole yeah. new vibe. <laughs> and uh, you know, with that, you know, I just really believe in you know, the superpowers that I talk about, we're just getting started. So we're going to be doing this a long time together. What's on your plate in front of you now? You've got VMworld coming up in a few months. Uh, priorities, objectives, keep, what's, what's, up, what's on your plate? Well, you know, I, I have to leave some of the secrets for what we're uh, you know, cooking up for uh, VMworld this year. You know, but some of these steps uh, clearly in the uh, developer container space, super important. You know, for us to really make some progress there. Obviously, we'll have some incremental cloud announcements as well. Uh, you know, Containerware it rhymes with VMware. Yes, it's very good. <laughs> hey, we, we, we have an advertisement on that coming out, so uh, you know, a new ad. But uh, you know, it really is. I think uh, you know that topic area is one that you know. How can we really solve that for customers that they really can deploy at scale? You know, containerized environments for an enterprise uh, workload. So excited about that area, and uh, you know, maybe just a few deliverables from what we announced this week. All right, take your uh, CEO of VMware hat off. Put your Cube Analyst hat on. 
What's the most important story here at Dell Technologies World? If you were a commentator, um, you can't say VMware because it's biased, but you got to be objective. You can say VMware if an objective. What's the most important storyline here as a backdrop for Dell Technology? What's, what's the real net net to customers? Well, you know, I think, uh, you know, and I'll say, you know, as, as exciting as the Microsoft announcements were, I think the most important thing was VMware Cloud on Dell EMC, on-prem. Because to me, you know, the fact, you know, I, I go to CIOs, right, and I've done this probably five times since the keynote finished on Monday, and I say, how many of you have fully updated your hardware, your firmware, your operating <laughs> systems, your networking <laughs> stack, right, your compute <laughs> stack, right, your management, on the latest releases, all of them patched, upgraded appropriately for your environment? Yeah, they say, their right. eyes roll. <laughs> the answer is none. Yeah. You know, not some, none. Right, you know, I have customers that are asking me to extend support for vSphere 4.5. <laughs> right, you know, it's like, what? You know, that's been EOL'd for a year and a half. What are you talking about, right? <laughs> you know, I mean, you know, but the reality is, is that, you know, most people go to the cloud, right, public cloud, not because it's more cost effective or because it's better, it's because it's easier. Right, so what we've really said is we can make easy in the private cloud and truly deliver that hybrid cloud experience. And I think as customers really experience the TCO benefits, the acceleration, the reductions in their operational environments, the personnel associated with it, the security benefits of being always patched, upgraded, the most release. You know, now you're talking about attacking that other trillion dollars yeah. of operational costs that they're bearing in their personnel and so on. You know, to me, that is like so powerful if we really get that engine going. Yeah. So and in the a, simplicity that comes out of that. Yeah. It's just you know, and so much. You know, and again, the demo that we showed. You know, that was the VMware Cloud on AWS being able to demonstrate now a complete picture into the on-premise environment. That's powerful. Pat Gelsinger, CEO of VMware. I know he's got to go. Thanks for your generous time. I know you're really busy. Again, love you guys, Pat thank Gelsinger. you. We love you too. Pat. Pat Gelsinger, CEO of VMware, creating a lot of shareable values, got a lot of tailwinds at their back. VMworld's coming up, theCUBE of course will be there with two sets. As usual, the Cube cannons, two sets here, firing cannonballs of content here at Dell Technology World. I'm Jeff Furrier, Dave Vellante. Stay with us for more after this short break.